<laughs> but at the same time, I tell you that in England, I do these jokes, I get in trouble. It's not real trouble, right? What happens to me is maybe I get told, I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to perform in that comedy club again. Maybe I, I, I get written a letter of complaint, this guy's unacceptable. That's it. The place where I got in serious trouble for stuff which I said was my home country, Malawi, right? Because I, 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 I got in trouble. Now, you've got to understand, Malawi is seriously conservative, right? You guys, you think you're conservative. We were hardcore conservative. Like when I was growing up, there was no porn. Beyond that, there wasn't even kissing in the movies. They used to censor it, and it was low budget censoring. You'd fly into the country, they would confiscate all your tapes from your luggage, mail them from you, mail them back to you a week later with all the good parts missing. <laughs> and when I say low budget censoring, I mean it didn't just edit, jump smoothly. No, you'd be watching the movie, they'd even for a kiss. The screen goes blank, and you wait. And if you're waiting five minutes, you look at your friends, I think this was a good one. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember VHS tapes. I see there are a few young people. I don't even know how they got in, in with the 18 and over thing, right? Don't worry, I'm not chasing you out. Kids like trying to hide and stuff. You're just gonna learn a few new words. It's all right. <laughs> Well, we got these tapes, right? These tapes, VHS tapes. I'm sure you've never heard of these things. You're like, what is this VHS of which he speaks? Betamax was even crazier. But if you were watching the tape, sometimes it would go blank by itself. If it was an old tape, it would get all staticky. So I grew up thinking some movies were censored, which weren't. We just had no tape. Like, I remember watching a copy of The Sound of Music, which kept going blank. I was like, what are those nuns doing to each other? So we've got Malawi, very religious country. I mean, like, if, if, if your Bev Sibanda was in Malawi, she'd be burnt as a witch, right? We're, we're old school conservative. Then I come on stage, I start doing all my little sex jokes. Ha, 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 ha. There was a big outcry. They liked it, but they were shocked. There's a lot of people writing about it, but I wasn't in a lot of trouble. The time when I got in trouble is when I decided to be a clever man, started talking about the government. Yeah, you know. <laughs> But you gotta understand, you gotta understand, I thought I was safe, because at the time, my dad was in the government. <laughs> my dad was the minister of the education. So I thought, okay, maybe, maybe I, I gotta talk about this, right? And I got in trouble for two jokes, two jokes. The first joke was about the Malawian flag. Now, I don't know if any of you know about the Malawi flag, but the Malawi flag changed. We rebranded. <laughs> we did the Coke Zero thing. We rebranded. We used to be a rising sun. It was a metaphor. It was a, you know, we've risen from the ashes of colonialism. Yeah, you guys, you guys, yeah. You guys. <laughs> but then, you know, our government a few years ago, they decided, no, we've come a long way. We're no longer a rising nation. We've risen. So we replaced the rising sun with the full sun. Bang. We basically ripped off Japan's flag. I was doing a show in Malawi when this was going on, and Malawi was falling apart. We had a fuel shortage. There was no fuel in the country. People were selling diesel like drugs on the street. I, I got four gallons, I got four gallons, come on now. We had a fuel shortage. We had like strikes going on. We had, it was just horrible. So I went on stage and I said, I think maybe we rebranded the wrong way. The flag shouldn't have changed to a rising sun to a full sun, it should have turned into an eclipse. <laughs> first joke I did, the second joke which got me in trouble is actually a joke I did in my last show, which I did here, and maybe it's your fault because you guys laughed, I thought it was funny, right? Because I did a joke about my dad, which was totally true, that my dad, yes, he was Minister of Education, right? But it's no wonder he became Minister of Education because he was obsessed with education when I was young. No matter what grades I got, they weren't good enough. If I got five A's too busy, you'd say, no! You're not reaching your potential. <laughs> Apply yourself. If I got seven A's, one would say, no! You're not reaching your potential. Study, lock me up, apply yourself. So, the good thing is though, now that I'm older, 
sometimes it's hard to bond with your parents because of the age difference. I always have something to call them about. I'll just give them a call. I'll say, Dad, we know we've got food shortages all over Malawi. We've got teachers on strike. I don't think you're reaching your potential. <laughs> Maybe you should apply yourself, Dad! <laughs> now you've got to understand, I did this joke on a Wednesday. Thursday morning, front page of both Malawian newspapers was my face. And the headline, Minister's Son Ridicules Government. My dad was in trouble. He was called into the cabinet. They yelled at him, why can't you control your son? We thought that was the end of it. Then I got a call from the Malawian censorship board. They're like, we have heard you are trying to bring down the government. We are coming to arrest you. Where do you live? make fun of it now, right? Because, you know, I'm okay. But at the time, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. And so I told them, look, 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 you got the wrong idea. That's not what I said. The, the reporters, the reporters who reported on the story where you, you found out what I said, they had their own agenda. They twisted my words. They said, fine. The next show, we're going to send three agents to watch you. If you cross the line, they will arrest you there and there. There and there. Shut up, I was scared. I'm not brave. I'm a comedian. I wanted to cancel the show, but I'd already put down the deposit. <laughs> I didn't want to lose the money. I was like, what do I do? What do I do? And then I remembered how Malawi works. You've got to understand, we are broke. Now, you guys, you think you have financial problems. No, no, no. We have serious financial problems, right? You guys, you've got diamonds and stuff. we got fish. <laughs> You know, Zimbabwe had a nickname. They used to say Zimbabwe is the bread basket of Africa. We're the empty basket of Africa. <laughs> so we are really, really reliant on donors, right? You guys have the option of saying, forget you donors, go away, we're okay. We had no option, right? So the donors have a lot of power, right? There was a time, a few years ago. Oh, sorry, we're, we're, we're doing a little bit of a baton thing because the this, this sound is all messed up. Okay. Hello, 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 how's this? Does this sound better? Does this sound good? Okay. Hello, actually, I don't even know what I was talking about. We're gonna, you know, we're filming this show for a DVD. This is gonna be cut out. This is a deleted scene right there. We, 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 we did the baton trade. And I was Usain Bolt, okay. Cool. Oh no, the poor guy with the follow spot got confused. I should mess with him. This, <laughs> wow, pretty good. You should get a job at the border. on the donors. So that means the donors have a lot of power over our legislation. Like a few years ago, Malawi went crazy, right? Put two gay men in prison for being gay. They weren't gay bank robbers. They weren't gay terrorists blowing shit up with pink bombs or something. They were just gay and they were put in prison for minding their own gay business. They weren't inflicting their gayness upon anybody. They were just being gay, put in prison. Now, you know, I was worried, I was embarrassed, I have a lot of gay friends, a lot of entertainers, and I'd kind of meet them like, hi, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the good thing was, because Malawi so dependent on the donors, the donors just called and said, look, you have to set them free. Oh, no more red nose money for you! So they set them free. So in the three days between finding out the Malawi censorship board were coming to my show, and a few days later, I called every donor I knew. 
the guy who was producing the show with me, he called every donor he knew. We had the Welcome Trust on, 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 on row three, UNICEF, row four, we just crammed it. It was like the United Nations in there. Every ambassador was there. And then we kept three empty seats at the front. We put the censorship board right there. At the beginning of the show, I told everybody, the censorship board is here to watch me. If I cross the line, they're going to arrest me. Everybody went, boo, boo, boo. I was like, arrest me now. <laughs> I thought I was pretty clever. I went back to the UK. I told my agent, clever woman, right? Told her that, oh, you know, I, I almost got arrested in Malawi. But I was too clever. I outthought them. She lost her mind on me. She said, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you let them arrest you? I could have made you famous. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess, you know, it would have been good publicity. But look, Malawian prisons are rough. I could have been there one or two days. I could have been beaten. I could have been raped. She was like, even better. <laughs> We could have got Amnesty International sending letters. We could have got Madonna and her Malawian kid to sing you a song. 